Greetings. Get ready to embark on an extraordinary journey exploring the world of Docker containers to provide you with Homar. Say goodbye to the complexities of server management. With just a few clicks, you'll gain access to all your apps and services, conveniently organized and easily accessible. Homar is one of the most popular and easiest fully functional dashboards you can add to Proxmox. We will do all this in a Proxmox LXC container using a Docker Compose file. So, buckle up and prepare to be amazed by the brilliance of this video. Now, without further ado, allow me to introduce you to our Docker expert, Nico. Please note that Nico has a charming Dodecanese European accent, but fear not, he speaks the Queen's English fluently. Over to you, Nico. Thank you, Josh. Hi there. Today we have an interesting application that we use to monitor our servers, and this is Homer. You can ask, what is Homer? So let me show you what we have, and then we will go through how we got there. Homer gives us a dashboard where we can add apps so that we can monitor our servers. These are three servers that we are monitoring with Homer. We have our DevOps blog server. We have our Linux blog server. We even have a notepad here which has a WYSIWYG editor that we can edit to put notes on our dashboard which we find quite useful to be able to leave comments. We are two people monitoring the system. This is a highly customizable dashboard. Today we have another great application that runs in Docker. We have provided a link down below to the instructions on our blog page. We recommend that you do this in your Proxmox container. In the previous videos, we have demonstrated how to create a LXC container and how to install Docker in there, as well as how to install Portainer. In order to save time, we are not going to do those installations. However, we will provide a link to a previous video where we have done that as well as a link to the instructions how to create the LXC container and how to install Docker in there and Portainer. With that out of the way, let's start. I've created this server. What you need to do is click on this, click on the start button. I've already done that. Click on the console and then log in. I've done that. Now let's get our fingers dirty. We will run these commands. As you can see, I'm already logged in as root, so I don't need to do this one. However, we do need to do this command. And the server is fairly up to date, so that's fine. Then run this command. We need nano. And I've already installed it and it said that I have the latest version. That's fine. Now let's make this directory. And let's go to that directory. You may notice that every time I create a project with a Docker Compose file, I'm always creating a folder with the name of the project inside the OPT folder. Then I go in there and I copy the Docker Compose file. Now we want to create the Docker Compose file. So copy this. Paste. I just want to mention where I get this from. I've provided a link here, and here they have the Docker Compose file. However, I don't like the port 7575, so you'll see I've made a change. Once you've opened the editor, copy and paste this into the editor, 
And this is the change I've made. I like my web ports to start with 8,000. It just makes it logical for me that anything serving that port is a web service. So that's the reason I made this change. And then you say Control S to save and X to exit. And let's clear the screen. Now we can run Docker Compose up. And this will start Docker Compose in the detached mode. What this will do is when the service has started, it will give me back access to the terminal. So I don't need to open another terminal. That was very quick, and the reason for that is, in order not to waste your time, I had tested it to make sure that it worked. I have found many Docker applications used to work two years ago, do not work today. So before I make a video about a Docker Compose file for a project, I first test them, and about 70% of them fail. So if you go to my blog, you will see I have a lot of articles of applications with Docker Compose files and they don't work. So uh, I just leave a note there to say this doesn't work. And that saves you a lot of effort because you know this is going to work 2024 and beyond. Enough said. Let's now open Portainer. As I mentioned earlier, we installed Portainer and Docker in our LXC container. I've now installed Portainer with the port 9000, and I've also registered the domain DNS for this server. You will notice that I'm using Rhino Kozo, and here I'm using Buffalo. All of these I have registered through Dynu DNS, D-Y-N-U DNS. So it's a service I recommend if you want to do what I'm doing and then be able to use URLs like these. And it's brought me into Portainer. I click on the Docker icon. Let's move this a little bit in and then click on the Portainer and you can see it's telling me that Homo is working and the published port. 8075 is the external port and 7575 is the internal port. And these are the internal network addresses in the Docker container. But don't worry about that. All you need to know is you can access it from your server. If I say IPA, you will see that my server is running 10.154.2.85. So this is a separate sub-network. It was created by Docker. Enough said. Let's go back to our instructions. And now we can open with that port. So let's do that. Here we are. This is the brand new installation. So I'm going to give it a username of admin. And I have a specific password that I use. And congratulations, we have now set up Homer. Before we demonstrate how we can customize the dashboard, let's have a look at what they say on their website. So they have boards. You have seen the one board that we have created, that we have modified. You can create users. Then this part is very useful. We can monitor our hardware. We can add media servers, Jellyfin, Plex. They're all supported. And I will demonstrate how you add a media server to the application. It even supports containers. We are now talking about Docker. 
So let's have a look now at the installed service. If we click this button here, we can see all the Docker containers running on the server. And we have Homo, that's this app, and we also have Portainer. And you can manage them, you can start them and stop them. You can add additional containers to your dashboard to monitor. This is a highly customizable dashboard, and we can switch themes. We can go from a, a light theme to a dark theme. Personally, I prefer the dark theme. And then if we want to add a server to monitor, to monitor, it can even be something that's running on the, on the network. Let me grab this one here. We can, we'll monitor this. So what we do is we go here, we say add. And let's add an app. We want to monitor this. And we're going to call this Proxmox. So we can monitor our Proxmox server from here. And let's put it underneath here. Now that we've done that, we can exit and save. And you see now, at a glance, I can see all my servers are running. The green dot here indicates the status of the servers I'm monitoring. You can also add widgets. To do that, we click here. It's as simple as that, and selecting the widget. There's a weather widget. There's a date and time widget, which is this one here. There's a notebook similar to this one. We have a home assistant automation widget so that we can monitor that and manage that. And I've, or it's as simple as Clicking the Add button, and you can see it's added it here. I don't want it, so I'm just going to remove it. This gives you a highly customizable dashboard that's easy to use, and that makes it popular. Thank you for watching this video. We trust you found this useful. Please give us a like and please subscribe to our channel. We haven't reached our target yet. And with that, back to you, Josh. Thank you for watching this video, exploring the world of Docker containers to provide you with Homar. After watching this video, we now can easily install Homar, one of the most popular and easiest fully functional dashboards you can add to Proxmox. We did all this in an LXC container in our Proxmox HomeLab server. Finally, it's time to use Homar in Proxmox. If you have not given us a like, please do so. Your dedication to exploring Proxmox's capabilities is invaluable. Stay tuned for more insights, automation, and empowerment through its incredible tools for your home lab. Please like and comment to share your feedback and suggestions for our channel. If you found this video valuable, consider subscribing to stay updated with our latest content and tutorials, ensuring you never miss out on informative videos. Your support is crucial for our channel's growth. For those eager to deepen their knowledge, consider becoming a Patreon supporter for exclusive access to upcoming training courses, enriching your expertise, and supporting the channel. We genuinely appreciate your support and look forward to sharing more enriching content with you. Stay curious, keep exploring, and continue harnessing Proxmox's remarkable potential in your home lab and DevOps journey. Thank you for being part of our community.